Do you have a vintage bike seating unused in your garage? It'll interest you to know that it can serve a lot more than another junk in the garage. If your kid wants a bike to ride, you don't necessarily have to get a brand new bike if you have an old one sitting in the garage. You can restore that old bike in the garage and make it look like new in a few steps. This video is your guide to restoring and renewing your vintage bike. You might be wondering why repairing an old bike should be an option. First, an original brand new bike can cost quite a fortune. However, with the repair of your old bikes, you will be spending very little, and in some cases no cash at all. So, with bike repair, you can get your kid a quality road bike and still save a lot of money. Another big advantage of a vintage bike is the original parts it comes with. Generally, vintage bikes were built to last. The chain guards and fenders you will find on a vintage bike are made of metal. This means they won't just break or get damaged after some time. The only thing to look out for here would be rust, which can be easily tackled. Also, vintage bikes have heavy-duty coaster brakes. You don't have to worry about wearing that you might find on bikes that are designed with hand brakes. You would also find spring seats, chrome platings, and ball-bearing block pedals. These features offer both longevity and physical attraction to a vintage bike. A few things you need to do before you start the restoration process of your old bike. First thing is to do some research on the bike you are working on. To successfully restore the bike to its proper condition, you would need a reference. So, do enough research so you can get the reference. The next thing would be to inspect the bicycle. This inspection will help you figure out what parts of the bike need the most attention. It would also help you know what accessories and parts you would need to change. There are few things to note about this bike repair process before you begin. The first is your budget. If you are keen on restoring the bicycle to its original condition, you will need original parts. The downside to this is that perfection might also create large costs. So, you would have to first decide how much you are willing to spend on this restoration. This will determine how close to the original you can go with the restoration process of your bike. If you do an inspection of the bicycle and no parts are missing, you have a huge plus. You won't have issues with having to get these missing parts. All you need do is make a few cleanups. Another thing to note is how much time you want to spend on the project. If you get down to the tiniest of detail with the bike, it might take much longer to finish up. Finally, this process would require you to use different hand tools and chemicals. So it is important that you have some experience with tools to help you through the process. It would also help if you have a friend or someone who has some experience with tools to help with the job. Another way to make the job easier and get more knowledge would be to visit a bike shop. The attendants here have more experiences. So, you can ask questions about the parts and tools you'll be needing. Let's get on with the process. Step 1 The Dismantling to do a full and proper restoration for your vintage bike, you would also need a full dismantling of the bicycle. This way you can do a full sweep of the bike for all the needed changes. Also, you can now work on all the separate parts of the bicycle that need attention. If you have experience with tools and general mechanics, dismantling the bike might take some hours. If you don't, you might need a number of days. Being an old bike, most of the parts will be rusted and corroded which makes them harder to work on. Taking the parts apart is not complex. You can easily see each part where they are joined with a number of bolts and screws. So all you need do is to remove these screws and bolts. However, you need to make sure that each of the screws and bolts you remove is safely kept away until it's needed. Remembering where each screw and bolt came out from is also a big deal. So, you can either take a picture of the initial arrangement before dismantling or just label each area. Removing some parts of the bike might require specific tools to be done right. We cannot give the exact tools that you would need, considering that bike designs vary across manufacturers. An example would be if you want to remove the axle that carries the pedal and allows it to rotate. This is called the crank arm. 
To remove this part, you would need a crank puller. The crank puller screws into the inside of the crank arms and extends its inner section. This pushes against the axle that the crank arms are forced onto. Using a large sized spanner to apply some force will help you pull the crank arms out. Step 2 Prep for Prime With the bicycle separated from its frames, you now need to get into a more tasking part of the restoration process. Getting the vintage bike to look like new would require you to prime and paint it. However, you cannot just begin to prime and pour paint on the bike as it is. The body of the bicycle needs to be prepared first. The first step, which is likely to take the most time in this process, is to remove the existing paint on the body of the bike. Getting the body completely clean is of vital importance to how well the primer performs. To get the best finish from your primer, it must be applied on a bare metal surface. When removing paint, recommended options to be of help are abrasives and chemical paint strippers. Instead of just using only regular wet and dry paper, you should try using aluminium oxide paper. To get the best result, you could mix it up. A coarse grade of aluminium oxide paper and smooth grade of wet and dry paper. Make sure that you don't rush this step. Take your time and remove every strip of paint. Depending on how many times the bike has been repainted, this might take you a day or two. Note that the coarse grade aluminium oxide paper is strong enough to remove metal too. You want to avoid damaging the frame of the bike. So, be sure to take it slow as you go deeper. Chemical paint strippers would also function well for this step. However, its performance is dependent on how many layers of paint you would have to battle. Step 3 Handling Rust Performing bike repair on any old bike at all would always come with the problem of rust. Having rust doesn't, in any way, render the bicycle useless. Rust can be removed. The ones that prove too stubborn to be removed can be chemically treated. If you find rust on the straight areas of the frame that are easily reachable, wet and dry paper should do the trick. Make the fine wet and dry paper slightly wet and rub it over the areas affected by rust. In areas where the rust doesn't go too deep, then you should be left with the real metal after a few scrapes. Do this on any reachable part of the frame where rust is found. For rusted areas that are hidden or too small for your hands to reach properly, there are rust removal chemicals in the market. You can purchase a little size as you won't be needing so much. All you need is a paintbrush to apply the chemical. Once you apply it to all the rusted parts of the frame, you can sit back for a few minutes and let the chemicals get rid of the rusts. Note that most of these rust removal chemicals function differently. So, make sure that you check the reviews and instructions before buying and using them. Step 4 Prime the Metal At this point, you are pretty much done with the rigorous part of this project. Priming the frame of the bicycle is pretty easy and straightforward. Depending on the season at the time you are carrying out this project, priming is best done on warm and dry days. You would need to hang the frame and forks of the bicycle with wires. If you have a tree you can tie your bicycle to, this would be the best option. If there are areas you don't want primer or paint to touch, this is the time to cover them up. Clean off any speck of dust and grease that could be on the frame. You can do this with a paper towel and white spirits. Make sure that no part of the frame is left untouched so that painting will be done on a proper surface. Let the spirits evaporate, then, pick up your can of primer. You need to give it a good shake for at least 2 minutes or more. This ensures that all the particles mix together perfectly. Apply the primer coating 2 times. A day apart. That is, apply the first coating on one day, then, the second on the next day. Ensure that you do not make any of the coatings too thick to avoid it running. With the primer set, you now need to set the frame and forks aside safely. Your garage should be fine. The primer needs a number of days to dry off and become ready for paint. Do not be in a hurry to take out the coverings on the areas you covered as you would still need them for the next step. Step 5 Ready for Painting about two or three days after priming, it is now safe to paint over the primer. 
Painting is pretty much the most fun part of this whole activity. However, there are still a few preparatory steps to take before painting. Also, you might want to check your local bike shop for the kind of paint that will work best for the job. Step 1 Clearing the surface. To paint, you need to once again suspend the frame and forks in the air. Also, make sure that you have disposable gloves on as you do this. Start by using a moist piece of fine wet and dry paper, somewhere between 2000 grit and higher. Use this wet and dry paper to softly rub the mainframe areas. When doing this, ensure that you do not apply too much pressure while rubbing the surface. Too much pressure could affect the pre-applied primer coating and rub it off. The main objective is to remove any form of dents or imperfection that might be on the primed surface. This makes a better finish after you have applied the paint. Note that this step can only be performed on the mainframe areas. You might not be able to reach the tight corners of the bike. Step 2 Clean the dust. Dampen a paper towel and use it to wipe the frame. This helps remove the residue created by the sanding you did earlier. Leave the frame and forks for a few minutes for them to dry. While the parts are getting dried, you should now gather your paint cans. Step 3 Prepare the paint. Being a kid's bike, it should not take you more than two cans. However, just so you aren't left stranded, you might just get an extra can. Give the cans a proper shake for at least two minutes. There is no limit to the number of colors you use on the bike. Whatever you decide to do should be based on personal preference. Step 4 Spraying. The painting would also require you to apply the coating more than once. When doing the first, ensure that the coating isn't too thick. Keep in mind that you won't be coating it just once. Let this first coating stay for some minutes. When it is dry, you can add another layer of paint. Leave it to dry, then add a third and fourth layer. Make sure that you keep each layer as gentle and light as possible. Note that it might take you about four layers of coating to get the desired opacity on the color. If at the third coating you can see the color properly on your bike then you can stop. If not, you can keep going. When spraying, the important thing to make sure of is that the spray doesn't become too thick. If it becomes too thick it might look untidy and even begin to drip. As fun as this part of the process is, it requires you to be patient. For each coating, be sure that you wait until the paint is properly dry before applying the next. After spraying the last layer, you now need to leave the frame and forks for the paint to harden and dry completely. You should wait at least two weeks before continuing to work on the parts. In this time, you can begin to get the parts that need replacing ready. Step 6 Checking the other parts. While the paint job dries, you need to check the other parts of the bicycle that you separated from the frame. These parts might need some attention too. You might need to remove paint, do some cleaning, grease, and other stuff. Depending on how long the bike has been sitting in the dust, some of these parts might need little or no work at all. Pedals, crank arms, main sprockets, and handlebars would usually need some washing off. Using a bucket of warm water, wet and dry paper, wire wool, and kitchen sponge you can have all these parts looking sharp and shiny. Some parts might still have some of the old paint on them. You can use the same procedures you used with the frame. To make the job easier, you can make use of a chemical paint stripper. Ensure that you check and re-check all the parts, including the wheels. Take this time to replace and or repair where needed. Step 7 Reassembly You are gradually coming to the end of the bike repair process. When the frame and forks are dried, put them back together. Here are the steps to get all the other components fitted. The bottom bracket and crank arms. The bottom bracket would typically be covered in old grease which you need to clean up. Using white spirits poured in a container and a toothbrush, scrub the bearings, the bearing cups, and axle in the spirit. This should not take you much time or effort. With a few scrubs, the grease would leave the components and float in the liquid. After this, you can apply some grease on the components. Remember that you need to apply enough grease to the bearings. 
Having too much grease will not affect the bearings in any negative. If it's ever too much, grease is very easy to clean. Now that the parts are clean and properly lubricated, getting them back together would be much easier than when you took them apart. After putting the bottom bracket together, the next area to work on is the crank arms. Add some grease to the axle then slip it on and push it into place. Force the crank arms onto the shaft of the axle by tightening the central nut. Check that both crank arms are rotating seamlessly. The chains. Install your sprockets in the front and rear derailleur so that you can place the chain in position. Fixing the chains isn't something you want to do on your own, you need to have some assistance. If you buy a new chain, it's going to be lubricated, which will make it hard to operate. Now, place the chain around the sprockets and derailleur and hold the two ends together to check the length. It is most likely that the chain might be too long and need cutting down by some links. For this, you would need a chain tool. You can get one at a local bike shop. Use the tool to take out as many links as the bike would require, and use the chain tool to install the chain. Brakes and cables. This may vary widely, however, old bikes tend to have faulty brake pads. Handlebar brakes. If yours does, it is important that you get a new one. This is where the research you did before starting the bike repair will come in handy. Brake pads come in different sizes and designs. So, be sure to check that the one you get is proper for your bike. The next step is to cable the brakes. This should not be too challenging depending on how much experience you have with such procedures. It would also help if you have assistance. Once you have the brake cables installed, the gear cables will be a walk in the park. The gear cabling in old bikes is an advantage since the shifters are not on the handlebar. Cover the ends of the wires with the small pieces of metal that come with the wire. This keeps the cables safe and tidy. Step 8 Test Ride With all the parts in place and the bicycle fit back together, the bike needs a test ride. A quick ride so the rider can have a feel of the work done and check if there are corrections to be made. If it doesn't feel right yet, and you are not sure of the source of the problem, it might help to take it to your local bike shop for more professional assistance. Your vintage road bike is now ready to serve some purpose for your kid. Remember that not all the issues highlighted in this video might affect your own bike. So, if you get stuck at any point, contact someone with experience. Finally, when purchasing bike parts, it is best you visit a bike shop and talk with the retailers so they can help with the specifics. If you've enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button below. Hit the notification bell so you'll know once we post a new video. Also, drop a comment below so we can know your thoughts. Finally, don't forget to check the description below for more details. Visit our site zimkidsbikes.com for more kids bike tips like this.